I have a problem. There are a lot of aspects of game dev that I really enjoy. Art is pretty fun. I like planning out mechanics and designs. And most of all, I really like programming. The problem is, well, I'm also a retired. Before we jump into the inventory stuff, if you're new here, I'm making a survival tower defense game where you gather resources to craft your towers and protect your base from enemies that attack at night. Uh, the game is written in Zig with the help of a graphics library called Raylib. If that sounds interesting to you, subscribe to the channel to keep up to date on the process of the game. Right now I'm working towards an alpha build of the game that will be released for free, so if you're interested in playtesting, stay tuned for that. So you see, an inventory should be relatively simple to implement. Uh, you take item from here, you put item here. However, things get more complicated when you try to over-engineer things from the start. There are a lot of things you can try to foresee when you start structuring new code. Uh, you can think of one data structure that might be better than another. You can have an idea of how things will work together in your existing code base. Uh, but trying to optimize your code before you implement anything is usually a recipe for disaster. Now, that's what happened to me these last two weeks trying to build out this inventory system. So let's dig into this mess of an inventory system I've made, and hopefully you can avoid some of the problems I've had. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I thought making the inventory would be much easier than it actually was, mostly because I overcomplicated it for myself. The most intuitive approach to creating an inventory to me seemed to be just using a fixed array. Uh, but then I thought, maybe I'll let the player upgrade their inventory at some point progression. So I had to come up with another solution. Now my mind then jumped to an array list. Remember, Zig is a systems language, so we don't have any fancy dynamic arrays out of the box, but we do have this handy array list, which is basically the same thing in the standard library. However, I decided that I didn't like this implementation because it would make lookups in the player inventory pretty annoying. If I wanted to get a specific item from the player's inventory, I would have to loop through the whole inventory, check each item to see if it was the one I was adding, and then add it. For some reason, I thought looping through 30 items or so would be suboptimal, so I decided to use a hash map. Yeah, I don't know why I did that. Now we'll come back to why this didn't work out a bit later, but if you're not a programmer, just know that this was absolutely brain dead. Now, looping through 30 or so items will take a negligible amount of time. The first version of this, as with all development, absolutely nuked itself. Zig has pretty great stack tracing, so finding out where the errors were coming from is usually pretty easy, and eventually you got a version of this working where you can run over an item and it disappears as God intended. Uh, I then added a pickup range for the item and an easing function when the player walks close enough. I think adding these little bits of game feel now make the early stages of development that much more enjoyable. I went through few iterations as you can see from a version where the texture was moving instead of the sprite and to a version that was way too fast. Now, this is the final result here. I think it looks pretty good. Uh, we first get a direction by normalizing a vector and then use a quick little ATAN2 function on the speed of the item, clamping that to a max speed until it hits the player's hitbox and then is added to the inventory. Uh, with adding items done, we can move on to removing them. Uh, but right now, the items are just going into an inventory stored in memory and the player can't interact with them at all. So I had to make an inventory UI to display them. So I work in a field that is fairly adjacent to web development. I've done uh, quite a bit of it myself, so I'm familiar with the concepts of creating UI, uh, but usually that's left to the designer. All I have to do is translate their Figma designs that are way too complicated into code. I experimented with various styles. The hotbar you saw in the last video was super ugly and placeholder, so I worked on some designs to make it not so ugly. Uh, this is what I've landed on for now. I'm not sure about the outlines, as the rest of the game doesn't really use them. Uh, here's some versions with and without. Uh, let me know which one you think looks better. I'm leaning towards the non-outline version, but the outline version has a nice chunkiness to it that I like. Uh, I think it's a bit too distracting though. Uh, my initial thinking was that I was going to add the hotbar as one sprite, uh, but luckily I foresaw many issues with this, uh, mainly the fact that I have to subdivide the sprite in the code to be able to tell which hotbar slot was being hovered by the mouse. Uh, so I opted to have a single slot that gets appended as a slice, with the position being modified by the index of the loop times a set amount of pixels. If that sounds complicated, it's really not. Just look at this here. The indexes of the hotbar match up to the inventory slot, so hotbar slot 1 has items in inventory slot 1, and so on. As you can see, the slots are highlighted when your mouse hovers over them. Uh, this is done by just swapping out the texture being drawn when the mouse is over the slot. And here's the struct that I'm using for that if you're interested. Uh, once the hotbar was rendered on the screen, it was then pretty easy to draw the items in the player's inventory in the correct slot. Or at least I thought it would be. Uh, because Zig hash maps have iterators, I thought this would be indexed like an array. Uh, they are not. Or at least not how I was doing it. Uh, when I tried to draw the first item in the first slot using the same index, or what should have been the same index, it was actually drawn at slot 5, and then the next one at slot 9. I never really dug into why this was happening, because at this point I realized I should probably just be using an array. So I swapped out the data structure to a fixed array, and I uh, basically made the decision that I don't really care about having inventory size upgrades. I took a bit of finagling, but eventually I managed to draw and send the item with this hideous piece of code here. It was at this moment that I realized I also had to go back and refactor the code that I used for my 
items. Amazing. Because I want the count of the items to be shown along with the items in the hotbar in the inventory, but I don't want to store the count with the item itself because that just doesn't make sense. I had to make another wrapper struct around that that I'm calling an item stack. So I had to painstakingly go back and refactor all my code to work with the new struct instead of the old one. Uh, but once that was done, we had item counts being displayed in the inventory, and I think it looks good. So, now four or five days have passed at this point. I'm really sick of writing this inventory system, but I know I have to finish it so I can get onto the more fun gameplay stuff. Uh, so basically, next I got to work on removing items. I thought this part would be much easier than adding items to the inventory, and yet again, I was wrong. There's so many little edge cases to think about when doing removals. For instance, drawing the item next to the mouse and dragging it, or getting the appropriate slot being hovered over, or maybe the player isn't hovering over slot at all, what do we do with the items then? Uh, Luckily, when I wrote the inventory, I made each slot be what's called an optional. So basically that just means that each slot can either hold an item or be null. When we move one item to another slot, we can just put null in the old slot and move the item to the new one. We can use a pointer to the old item to make sure it has all the same stats when it gets moved to the new slot and isn't just a brand new instance of the item. Oh, but wait, now that I want to add right click functionality to the inventory, so when you right click, half the item stays and half goes into a new slot. Since I'm using pointer, both are updated at the same time. So what happens if I make any edits to the count of the new slot? Slot. Well, it gets added to both of them. So now basically we have two items that are copies of each other in two different slots. So when one day gets edited, they both get edited. At this point, I'm really done with this inventory system, but I have to press on because I'm so close I can taste it. I added a quick little div seal to round up when the number is odd, and I make some adjustments and add a few additional checks to get this. Behold, a working inventory system, complete with dropping functionality and dividing when right clicking. Totally complete and bug free. Wait a minute, there's only four logs spawned. Anyways, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Next thing I want to tackle is the crafting system. Uh, part of that will include some terrain and biome work, so the next video should have a bit more to look at other than code. Uh, thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next one.